Hi everyone, welcome back to the RV10 update. As I mentioned in the first one, I'm not going to do a build video. There's plenty of build videos out there. What I am going to share with you, things that I've learned along the way, I'm going to highlight some tools, some practices, etc., just to help fellow builders maybe going through their first build, things I've learned over the past 12 airplanes, 40 years, etc. So it's been about a week and uh, I managed to get the rudder done, you're seeing here, and the vertical stabilizer as well. That's down in the basement. I wanted to highlight the rudder here for a few things. Uh, first off, you can see for those of you with a keen eye, maybe wondering what's this all about. So this is my version of rudder trim for the RV10. I've used this on two of my RV10s and an RV7. It works really, really nicely. Now there's lots of options for rudder trim out there. You can do everything from a fixed wedge over here that's really only good for one true airspeed. Uh, you can use a yaw damper for an autopilot. That'll keep the ball centered as well. And there's a couple other trim mechanisms out there that you can buy from various companies like Aerosport products, etc., that are manual and on the inside of the aircraft that just kind of put some pressure on the rudder pedals to keep the rudder where you want it. They all work. Uh, this is just mine. I like it. Uh, for those of you who want to do it, because I know it's been copied a lot over the years, Tim Olson actually put the plans for this on his website, his MyRV10 website. Uh, we've gotten so many calls. Carol's going to post all the measurements and everything on our website today for you as well. Basically, it just uses a Ray Allen servo in here with a push rod that comes out here. I've left that all off now, so, uh, you know, we got to paint it. The thing I would remind you is you can see the rudder here at the bottom. Make certain you run... Uh, some wire up through there before you close the rudder out. The other piece of the rudder is up here going to the uh, Ray Allen trim servo. So that's the rudder. Now the rudder's got some neat uh, challenges, I'll call them. Uh, you know, one of the things why all the kits you start on the empennage, uh, you'll learn a lot of different things building the empennage that you're going to use throughout the rest of the aircraft. And you have to learn them quite fast because you're using all different kinds of techniques across uh, thin skins, thick skins, machine counter sinking, sinking uh, dimpling, etc. And uh, if you take a look down the rudder trailing edge here, you can see it comes to a point with a V there at the end. That's the trailing edge. This is the same trailing edge that's on all the control surfaces, basically, on the RV-10 and the 14. And I think the tail's on the 7 and 9 as well. And uh, so there's some tricks there for riveting that. It used to be we put that together with Pro Seal. Now the new way to do it, we just use some 3M, 3M structural adhesive tape that makes it much quicker, much less messier. So I put that tape on before I did that. And then one of the cool companies out there that makes tools, and I want to talk a little bit about tools here. You know, we built our first RV4 back in 80. Uh, we were on a very, very limited budget. And it's not that we're not on a budget now. But I've learned over the years that you things get done so much better and faster when you're using the appropriate tool. Back then, I had a hammer and a hacksaw, and we used it quite extensively. And uh, just like a lot of the neat things that have been developed for the RVs in the cottage industry over the years, there's a lot of tool makers out there that have come up with some really neat tools uh, to make this whole assembly project, construction project, go a lot faster. One of my favorite companies for tools is Cleveland. Uh, tool manufacturing company. That's with an A, C L E A V E L A N D, Cleveland Tool. And uh, I'm going to show you some of the tools that I've used and am still using on building RVs that just really make a difference. So we talk about this trailing edge here. Uh, one of the things you have to do is obviously countersink that wedge in there. And the part number on that wedge is a VA 140. And you have to countersink it. So it's perpendicular. In other words, if you look at this wedge, if you try and, you know, one drill go this way and one drill go that way, if you were per uh, perpendicular to the skin, you actually don't want to do that. You have to go basically perpendicular to the cord line, okay? And so Avery, or correction, I, I keep calling him Avery, but it's Cleveland, okay? They came up with a really nice jig that works uh, for the 10, uh, the 7 and the 9 trailing edge, and you flip it over, it works for the 14 as well. you got to be careful and use the right side here. But basically, and we'll show you a picture, I took a picture of it, you just clamp this down on your drill press, and then run that trailing edge through there, and then that makes the countersink absolutely perpendicular to that trailing edge, which works out wonderfully. Okay. Now, one of the other things you do to that trailing edge 
before you rivet it together is you put a slight crease in it. Here's another tool that is uh, works very nicely for that. Kind of show you how it works here. You take a, it's just got nylon rollers there, and you take going down the edge of the skin, you put it in there, and you just kind of bend a little as you're sliding it through. And you just want a slight crease. You can probably see that slight crease right there. And then that makes the skin lay down tight when you rivet it together so you don't get some separation there of the skin. So I'm just going to make it here just a little stronger so you can see what it does there. Okay. That's too strong. I just I know with the video there, it's kind of not showing up real well. Okay. So that's one area of the tools. The other thing you end up doing when you're building metal airplanes is a whole lot of drilling and deburring. I hate deburring. Most of the time, we end up using, uh, you know, your typical deburring tools are, uh, again, Cleveland makes this really nice hex shank deburring tool. You can get the multi-flute deburring tools as well. Basically, when you drill a hole in aluminum, and let's see if I got a couple holes drilled here, here, yeah, so yeah, you got holes here. You can see there's a little burr when you drill them. And so, you know, you chuck this hex bit into a drill bit, into a drill, and then you get that burr off. Okay. You can see I have to do both sides when I do it like this. So if you take a look at how many holes, I don't know if somebody counted once, there's 13 or 15,000 rivets in an RV-10. That's a lot of deburring to do. So one of the things I found over the years that works, it's called a Cogsdill deburring tool, burr away tool. And it's got a little blade. I'll show you a bigger one in here so you can actually see what I'm talking about. They come in all different sizes. You can see there's a little blade right down the center that kind of retracts as it goes through the hole. And I'll show you right here. You take this and you push it right through that hole. Now we've deburred both sides of that hole with one swipe of the drill. So basically cut deburring time down in half. That makes a big difference. I just really, really like that. You know, we live in a era of the internet as well, and uh, there's a lot of 3D printing going out there. So you can, you can Google search for a lot of things. People out there are posting all kinds of files. I found these out there for making the attach points here for the vertical horizontal stabilizer. These are, they're not that hard to cut, but it just saves time. Get these printed and put it right on your piece of aluminum, trace it, the holes were in the right spot, and away you go. So that made quick work. I think Carol said she'll post the link to these as well, but there's all kinds of stuff out there anymore for 3D printing. You want to be careful. These are not meant to go on there. These are just templates. They're non-structural, okay? And so back over here to some of the other tools I kind of want to talk to you about. You know, way back when I first started building, again, being on a budget, I bought this. This was an Avery hand squeeze tool. And... Uh, and what I found when I did the vertical stabilizer last week is my hands just don't do this very well anymore. It takes a lot of pressure to do this. And so it was time maybe to think about a pneumatic squeezer, dimpler, riveter. So I did. We did some research. Unfortunately, you know, I rushed and I, I bought one too quickly for a great steel price. And uh, a used one. A used one. And then found out that, you know, there are like anything almost like a oh, car. I wish I had bought that option. Or I wish I had got this. And so. Since Cleveland's one of my favorite tool companies, by the way, we're not sponsored by Cleveland. I'm just sharing this stuff with you, as I mentioned, okay? Um, you can watch their video on their squeezer that they make, and I did that, and uh, I ordered one the next day. One of the other things I like about Cleveland is their service. You order stuff, and it gets here within a couple of days. Um, but basically, it's a pneumatic squeezer, and what a couple things I really, really like about it. So first off, you can get this foot guide, Put pressure pedal here so you can hold this thing with both hands because when you're moving along the edge here riveting everything you don't want this thing falling getting off the rivet etc so with the foot pedal down here okay i can just hold this and then i can hold it and just and see how nice and slow that goes it really does a nice job but a really neat trick here is is the it's adjustable it's infinitely adjustable here to set all the different size rivets very quickly as you're going down because you go down some of the spars and some of the rib, uh, rivets are different lengths etc you can adjust this very quickly where some of the other squeezers out there do not have an adjustable ram here so you end up putting your your dies in there and then using washers to adjust the gap 
and uh, I just didn't like that. There will be a picture you'll see in the video showing this in the vise with washers in it, uh, and it's just got to be a hassle. So I'm very, very pleased with this purchase, a uh, bunch of different kinds of yolks, uh, and using it for dimpling and riveting as well. So very, very nice. There. Speaking of, go back to this hand squeezer where I still did use it. Remember I pointed out how you got to uh, rivet and dimple these, you know, perpendicular to the cord line. Another ingenious device that uh, Cleveland makes is a set of uh, squeezers here that actually are at the correct angle for the trailing edge here. So you just put this on there and uh, make sure it's the right way there and it holds in place. And I was able to run down the entire trailing edge, squeezing all of these. By hand, you could also put this in the pneumatic dimpler and do it if you wanted to. And uh, came out really, really nicely. So just a, kind of an ingenious thing as uh, trying to set this up on a table with a uh, you know bucking bar behind it and make sure that you're uh, actually setting them perpendicular to the cord line. This made it very, very, very easy. So it's another one I'd recommend you think about getting. Uh, well, the other thing here is organization is really important. There's some clever ideas here. You can make your own. Uh, just a block of two by four is what I used to do, and just drill holes and put all your dimple dies in there. So you keep them organized, because you're going to have all different kinds of them as you start building and throughout the project. So here's an example. You got number six, number eight, number ten dimple dies, all the different cups for AN 470 rivets, and then all the different uh, dimples for 332nd and 1 8 rivets as well. So. But that blue one is actually from Cleveland. Yes, yeah, so this one is from Cleveland. Okay. Uh, works very nicely. And guess what? It's sitting here right next to this DR2 dimpler. This makes quick work of dimpling all the skins. So like the skins for the rudders, elevators, even the vertical stabilizer fit in here very nicely. And you can just go through and move this down and you get a perfect dimple each time. Speaking of which, I will tell you that the other thing I have found from Cleveland are the dimple dies are just of the best quality. They, they just they just do a really, really nice dimple. As a matter of fact, when it comes to riveting the tanks, they make a special set of tank dies uh, so that the rivets do seat properly because you're going to add that pro seal in there between the rib and the tank. So it adds just a little bit of extra thickness and the tank dies make a difference on having those rivets set flush. So you might consider doing that. If you look behind the rudder here, we've got this table. This is actually the, the dimpler that I showed you on the table there, the DRD2. Um, it goes underneath this and the little dimple just shows right here. So your skin slide right across it and it's very easy to uh, one not do any damage because if you put the dimple in, so you're dimpling with this up, it always gets in the hole before you'll squeeze it. So you want to put the male die here in the bottom. And uh, let's see if there's anything else we might talk about. You can see we got the vertical or the horizontal stabilizer here in the jig. Uh, you know, in my short sightedness, so we finished the helicopter and kind of thought, all right, we're done building and managed to give away Clecos. That was like dumb. So I'm now scrounging for Clecos. Obviously this thing takes just the horizontal takes a lot of Clecos. I know we're going to need a whole lot more for the wings. And then what was a nice surprise is I went to build the horizontal. It tells you to make these jigs to hold it in place while you're working on it. And, uh, so I think I remember seeing those around the house somewhere. Sure enough, went down the basement in a little cubby hole. Here's all the jigs that I had made probably more than 15 or 18 years ago now. So uh, somehow we managed to never throw them away. So that, uh, I would just encourage you to you know, keep stuff you make, probably share it with other builders. Um, builders are doing that with me as well now. It's really, really appreciated. And uh, so you can see the horizontal. Hopefully we'll get that done this week. This past week had a little bit of interruptions, unfortunately, for the people uh, suffering from Helene. We did make a couple of trips in the RV-10. It's a nice load hauler, and we were just a small piece of that solution. Uh, it was just amazing seeing that massive general aviation airlift, uh, and it's still going on. It's, it's just neat to see the country come together and do that for the, for the people suffering up there. So I think I covered all, covered all the stuff I wanted to talk about this time, but again, the overarching thing is Take the time to invest in some good tools. One, they'll last. They're going to make small work of some of the harder to do items when you're building these aircraft. And the quality of the product just comes out a whole lot better. 
you don't have to buy everything. There's, you know, with 12,000 RVs flying now, somebody close to your neighborhood's probably got some of these tools, an EAA chapter, and loan them or borrow them to you or something. So, uh, but use the right tool. Okay. Thanks for watching. Hey, just in closing here, here is the completed trim on our current RV10. So you can see how it works with the clevis here and an 832 rod going back to the Ray Allen servo that's there. It works really nicely. And then I know what you're all wondering, did he prime? <laughs> yes, we primed everything on the inside. Uh, so not to start primer wars, I think I said I wouldn't do that last time, but uh, I actually ended up using uh, direct to metal primer, epoxy primer from uh, Eastwood. We used that on the helicopter, actually Vertical Aviation turned us on to it because they used it. I really liked the way it stuck. It, it just doesn't scratch off. So uh, that's what we're using on this one. And uh, we are priming everything on the inside.